the first thing you're going to do when you start a CapCut project is to take a look at the details over here on the right hand side. There's a button at the bottom called modify. So click that. It's a good idea to give your project a name so it's easy to find later and keep all of your projects organized. Speaking of organization, I choose to keep my media all in the original place because I have all of my YouTube content organized on my external hard drive. Under resolution, we're going to choose customize here because CapCut is great for editing your YouTube videos. And I want to make sure this video is set up for YouTube. So it's 1920 by 1080. That way, no matter what footage I end up importing into this project, the project itself is going to be 1920 by 1080 YouTube video. Frame rate is going to be 30 frames per second. Color space is going to stay at SDR. And free layer is a really interesting setting. I love that they included this because if you have it turned on, then CapCut for desktop acts a little bit more like an actual desktop editor. You can move your clips around on your timeline from one track to another really easily, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Once you have your project settings set up, just hit save at the bottom. You obviously need to import your media. So I'm going to choose this blue plus button here, import, and this is going to open up my folders. I'm going to go to my external hard drive, my inbox, the video that I'm editing is DJI mic settings and I have two screencasts and two regular videos that I shot on my phone. So we're gonna have A roll and a little bit of maybe B roll plus a screencast in here. I selected the files, the actual video files that I'm going to import and I'm gonna choose import. Now I'm gonna teach you exactly what I teach my students inside of Social Video Pro, my 30 days to a thriving YouTube channel course. This is the video editing method that I use that I teach others and I call it the BFF editing method. So we're gonna start with the letter B for basic. And I put a link to the BFF method cheat sheet down in the description below this video. So to make your basic edits, we need to get that footage down onto the timeline. So I'm going to start with the first clip that I recorded right here. I'm just going to select it and drag it down to the timeline. This is going to add the entire clip to my timeline. If I wanted to just add one piece or one section of this to my timeline, I could come over here and just drag those bars on the left and right, shorten that clip a little bit, and then bring it down to the timeline. And it will just be that one little snippet. And then if I zoom in here on the timeline, have the clip down here, we can see it in our player window. We can see the waveforms down here. So you can see when I wasn't talking and then when I was talking. So I'm going to use a little bit of this here as B-roll, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Right here is where I start talking to the actual camera. This is like the beginning of the video. So let's take a listen to this. So you have the DJI mic for your camera or your phone to make it sound as best as I can. Right, so I have this spot right here where I stop talking and I need to cut this because right in between here, you can see I kind of mess up my words or I start over again. So right here, I'm going to split this clip because we need to chop up this whole entire clip to keep the parts where I actually said what I meant to say and get rid of anything where I made a mistake or I restarted. This is the basic edit. We're creating a rough cut. And as I'm going along, I'm just finding where I want to split the clip using command B or just hit that split button over here and then selecting what I want to delete and just hitting this little trash can. And then my two clips come back together again and I don't have a weird space there where I deleted something. An alternative way to clean up your cuts like this might be to just drag the tail end over to where you want the clip to actually start. So you're either taking it like a piece of tape and cutting it up with scissors and getting rid of the parts you don't want, or you're just trimming the ends of that piece of tape if all you need is just a little bit of an edit at the beginning and a little bit of edit at the end. It really depends how you shoot your video and how many mistakes you make when you're shooting your videos. This is just a nice rough cut here. I want to then move my next clip to my timeline and we'll do the same exact thing to that one. So I'm just gonna drag this down and I'm going to place it right here 
between my intro and my outro. We can mix things up later, but just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to put it right where I want it in this particular edit. So you can see I have a few clips at the end, a few clips at the beginning, and this long clip here is the one that I'm going to chop up next. Now I have a rough cut of my intro, my outro, and the first part of my A roll. I wanna point out that everything you're doing with your clips here in CapCut on the timeline is undoable. So if you make a mistake, if you cut this here and you're like, oops, that's too far, all you have to do is hit Command Z and it will go back. If you want to re-edit the whole thing, that's fine too. All of your clips that are up here in your media area, you're not doing anything permanent to them. You're just pulling them into the timeline and cutting them up like a piece of tape and then rearranging them. So you could grab these clips, pull it up and drop it in wherever you want it to go. And then if you can't remember where it went, like me, um, just hit undo command Z and it will go back to where it was before. You can also use these functions way over here on the left to lock your track. If you're adding your B-roll or you're playing with your background music, you can always lock a track so that you don't accidentally do something. You can also make your track invisible so that that isn't even viewable in the preview window and you can mute an entire track as well. And next I need to pull in my screencast. Now my screencast is already edited because I like to edit my screencasts in ScreenFlow. So I already edited that part. So I just need to import that. So I'm gonna grab my screencast. I'm gonna pull it down. I want it to go right here in between my clips. And that's in there. And then I have another little snippet to put right after that. So I'm gonna drag that down too. So I now have a complete rough cut and depending on your needs or your desires for this video, you could be done with it. You could export it to YouTube, but what about text and effects and background music? You may wanna fine tune this a little bit, make it look a little bit more polished and a little bit more professional. So we'll talk about fine tuning in just a minute. If you are done and you wanna export your video, I show that at the very end. So you can use the timestamps to skip ahead to the exporting process if you want to go there now. And hey, if this video is helpful for you so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me. That helps other people discover this video too. So let's talk about text. Up here at the very top, I'm going to choose text. And we have default text. We can add this to our project. Just hit the plus button. And that's going to add a little text box right here. And you can see it on our player. You can see it down here on our timeline. And we can treat this just like it was a regular clip. We can move it around. We can put it wherever we want it to go. We can also change the link just using the trim handles on either side. Here, I'm just gonna double click on the text. I have it selected in the timeline. So I could just grab this and move it someplace, but I wanna put it right back in the middle. I'm gonna use my guides. If I double click, then I can just fill this in and start typing. It's also over here in this uh, text box over here on the right hand side. I can choose what font I want. I can use the slider to change my font size. I could also just type in the number or use the arrows here. And we have the style button so we could make it bold, we could make it underlined or italicized. We can change the colors. There are some preset styles. So if you use the CapCut apps, you know these styles come in really handy. So you can make it with an outline, you could reverse it. There's all of these preset styles here. We have character spacing, which is going to spread your characters out. We have line spacing, which is something that you might want to do. This is going to kind of depend on the font that you choose. We have position and size. You can add a custom stroke or outline background. Just change the color, text shadow. You have all of these text settings, which are really great. You also have this option and just use some of these default ones here. Then you also have these text effects. That's a basic title screen, basic text function that you can do in pretty much any editor. But CapCut has a couple of other features for text like animation where you can have it 
fade in. I'm not going to get into tracking in this video because it's a little bit more complicated than what I'm trying to do. And if you're familiar with text to speech options on like TikTok, for example, you also have those here inside of CapCut. So for example, if I wanted the voice of Jesse to say my title, it would sound like this. DJ, I mix settings. That didn't sound that great. The other text option I wanted to show you is the captions. Come down here on the left to auto captions and hit create. And you can see I now have this whole other row, this whole other track in my timeline. And these are the captions. So you can see I have them down here and you can go through and just check them. You could click on one, double click and edit it up here if it transcribed the word wrong or if you want to capitalize something. When you edit your styling, this is where I really like the preset styles from CapCut, um, then all you have to do is just choose a style or give it your own custom style and it will apply to all of the captions in your video. It's so easy. A really common function uh, when you're editing videos, especially for YouTube, is the addition of B-roll. So that's where you have some extra footage that goes over top of your main footage, your A-roll footage. In this case, I have a little bit of footage here at the beginning of my video that I want to use as B-roll. So from maybe right about here, I'm going to trim this here to here. Now, this is the little clip of B-roll that I want to have over top of where I am speaking. So I'm just going to grab this clip. I'm just going to keep my mouse button down. I'm going to hold this down and see how if I just keep dragging it places, it's going to give me these guides and ask me where I want to put this thing. So I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to drop it right here and it just created a whole new track. I'm going to bring my title up a track. So these are kind of swapping places. We'll do something like this. So I have my title over top of my B-roll. And now that it's there, I think I will give this a little bit of a look. So I got a little bit of B-roll in there. I don't really have much other B-roll to add in, but all you have to do is add your media, decide what you want to add, and then just drag it down. If I wanted this piece to be B-roll, I just drag it down and leave it on the track that I want the B-roll to be on. It's so easy. So in this fine tuning phase, it's where I'm kind of putting everything together to finalize everything. So I wanna make sure that every little cut in between my clips is nice and clean and smooth. So that usually means zooming way in. You can see from my waveforms where I stop talking here and then I start talking here. So I'm just trimming the ends just a little bit. So at this point, you've done your basic edits, you've done your F fine tune edits. The final F in BFF method is getting a little bit fancy. What I like to talk about here are adding lower thirds to your videos, adding background music, and this is actually pretty easy. With the text function, you can easily add lower thirds by choosing a text template or even just coming in and using regular text. So let's add a regular default text. You have your text, you would have um, an animation where you could, let's see, so your lower third is coming in just like that. It just kind of fades in. There is background music inside of CapCut that you can use. All you have to do is find the sound you want to use, add it with the plus button. It's going to add to the track. And now you have a background audio track here. Now, the reason why I don't use any software installed background music is because I don't know what the rights are to that music. And I always want to make sure that I'm using royalty free background music. I use Epidemic Sound for this. And that way I know that 
the background music that I'm using on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever it gets uploaded, I know that it's not going to have any copyright claims or copyright strikes. I know that I'm protected that way when I use Epidemic Sound for my background music. So let me just pull something in from my Epidemic Sound library. I always like this one. So it's dropping right in on my timeline. If I leave it just like that and hit play, watch what happens. So you have a DJI mic for your camera or your... It's way too loud, right? So what we need to do is bring the volume down a little. And you can either grab this little volume line. You can see the little arrows that pop up. You can grab this and just drag the whole thing down. Or you can use the audio editing pane over here. And you can see as I drag this, my volume goes up and down. And I'm happy with it. So up here in the top right, I'm going to choose export. Now I have the title of the video that's already there because that was the title of the project. CapCut wants to know where should we export this video to? So where's that final version of the video going to go? And I'm going to put mine right here on my external hard drive. So my project is at 1920 by 1080. So the resolution doesn't need to change. That's how I wanted the project set up. And that's how I want the exported file to be as well. So that's a 1080p video. The bitrate, I'm going to go for recommended here and Kodak H.264. I want my format to be an MP4 file. My frame rate is going to be 30 frames per second. I'm not going to do anything with a cover image or anything like that. It'll tell me right down here at the bottom that this video is 7 minutes 13 seconds. It's going to be 878 megabytes in size and hit export. It'll take a few minutes just like any video editing software will take to export and then you can upload it to YouTube. So now you know how to use the BFF method that I teach inside of Social Video Pro, my 30 days to a thriving YouTube channel program. And you know how to use it with CapCut so you can create professional looking polished YouTube videos. Don't forget you can download the BFF method cheat sheet. I'll link to that. And if you really want to grow your YouTube channel without spending forever, I will pull up my whole playlist that will show you exactly how to do that by building a niche channel. And I'll see you there.